Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to go over what a data asset is and then how we can utilize it within Unreal Engine. So one of the things that I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to showcase how we can use a data asset, but just a nice simple explanation. A uh, data asset is very similar towards what a structure is. You know how with structures you can set like here's um, a float variable named whatever, um, and then you can also set different types of variables in it. Uh, the only thing is within the struct that you make, you can't actually specify what those values are. Data asset is somewhat similar where you would create um, something like a struct where you would say, here is the model of my character, here is the name of the character. And then when you make a basically a child of that data asset, you would pull in those variables and then you can actually set them yourself. So whenever you want to use them, you're going to pull those exact data that matches. Very similar towards how the data table works, where the structure you make and then you make a data table and you have all of the lists. But instead of having a list of everything, you end up having individual blueprints that represent those pieces of data. So you'd be able to pull those in pretty much whenever, as long as you have a reference to the one that you're wanting to use. Uh, for an example, if you made a character selection screen, you'd be able to, once this button is clicked, we're gonna pull and use this specific um, data asset, and then you can pull whatever necessary information you want. Now, instead of a data table, where a data table, you have to check the rows till you find whatever row is matching. Now, of course, you go either way, just depending on your use cases. Just make sure to take a look at what's best for your game. But nonetheless, let's go into it and I'll show you an example. All right, and before we make our data assets, we need to make what's called a primary data asset. So it's very similar how with uh, data tables, you need to make a structure first. You need to be able to tell what type of information needs to be populated in. Uh, so it's very similar in that manner. So what we would need to do is first things first is I'm going to create a brand new folder. We'll change the folder. We're just gonna call this data. And from here, we're gonna go into blueprint class and just type in primary. And we want to select the primary data asset. So this is where we're going to set what we want to use for our datas. And then after that, we would be able to create all of the data assets for this primary. So we'll hit here and naming convention is DA and we'll do underscore and we'll just call this um, character. So all I'm going to do in this example is I'm gonna use the data assets to change the model of my character. And then I'm also just gonna set a variable based upon um, what the name of the character may be. We're just gonna give it random names. I'm not gonna to go too in depth on what type of features you can make but it will showcase how you can pull in these information. Uh, I do use it in other tutorials that I make. So if you want to take a look at how to utilize it, I already use it in my videos, more than happy to point you in the right direction. Anyways, going into this, after we create it, you open here. Now, what we need to do is we would need to create variables. So the variables are going to be what our data assets uh, will need to have information put in. So you would have to select, okay, so the name is Bob, and then the model will be Skeleton Soldier, whatever it may be. But you have to set it within the primary data asset. Another thing is that in the event graph, you can actually make custom events so that if you wanted to use very specific variables for whatever conditions you want to make, um, Let's see if I can think of an example for the custom graph. It doesn't, I don't see it get utilized a lot within videos, but it's something that exists and I think people should know. It's very similar towards how you can use an event from a parent to a child. So like if, I don't know, pick up item is on your uh, parent character, obviously the child character will have the pick up item function and you could do things like that. Um, trying to think of different use cases. Uh, maybe I'll come up with one later, but just know that you can create a custom event and then all data assets will be able to have that custom event and they can use their respective variables based upon that, um, just like any other blueprint. So that also comes in handy. 
So for this, what we want to do is I'm just going to do a name. So we're going to have our character name. We'll put it as a string. And then we're going to add another variable. And then this is going to be the model. Which, or I guess, let's rename that and just do mesh. Let's be respective to Unreal Engine terms. And then what we want is our skeletal mesh. So like that, any data asset coming from this primary is going to have the variable name and mesh. And then whatever values we put in them will have the respective values. So from here, this is all we need to do for the primary data asset. So we can close that. I have that content browser open for a reason. I'll show you in a second. And then we're going to go into new folder. And we're just going to do data. Oh, assets or actually let's underscore assets and then we'll open up here now you can either type it in just type in data which is what i usually do because i'm lazy uh and prefer to use the keyboard or you can hover on top of i think it's miscellaneous and you can go to data asset and select from here like you would do for data tables we now need to select what we need to use it for as you can see, we have different ones that we have available. And I think I ended up naming this something I did before. Uh, so let's rename this to um, tutorial character. Let's go back over here. Oop, sorry, wrong way. Miscellaneous, that asset. And there we go, tutorial character right there. Hmm. This is why naming is important or just use a different project. Hit select. Naming convention is still DA, regardless if it's the primary or if it's all of the data assets that link. We'll underscore here and we'll name this, um, we'll call it brick. We'll open this up. And then from here is like I said, we have the variables. Now we need to set what the default values are. So my character's name is going to be brick. And then for the meshes, I imported the Unreal Engine, um, which was free for the month, I think. I think it was this month. Uh, let me get that pulled up really quick. It's the primitive characters right here. I believe they were free this month still. So if by the time you're seeing this, it's still March, then it's available. If not, um, it's no longer available for free. They're great assets and they work perfectly well for Unreal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to those meshes. I'm just gonna grab one. Uh, mesh primitive one. We're gonna grab that, throw that in. <clears throat> and that's gonna be brick. And then if I go back over to, let's go to data. And I'm gonna create two more. We're gonna call that brick and we're gonna call this, um, Jekka, I don't, I don't know. I'm not good with names, obviously. And we'll name this one. I, I drawn a blank on names or his name is Seth. <laughs> so we open up this, we're going to change the name Jekka. I'm going to go back into my models so I can grab other ones. We're going to primitive two. I think this one is the female. Okay, cool. Um, I said female, don't cancel me. Um, we're going to go into mesh. Which one is this? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And let's open up Seth. So then this is going to be Seth. And like that, we have our three data assets. We got Brick, Jekka, and Seth. And all we need to do is make sure that our character is pulling in that data asset. So let's go into our character, or actually let's close all these so that we can actually see all the folders. I need to really clean this up. Um, starting to get very clunky. Okay, and we'll go into here. From here, what we want to do is, once you've opened your character, go to the construction script. So there's um, 
different ways that you could go about doing it. But for me, uh, let's say we did a character selection screen and now we wanna use the data asset that we have set. So for starters, we need to be able to store the data asset, which is going to be in a variable, whether that it's going to be in the character itself, whether it is in the controller or wherever you're gonna store it. Uh, for this case, it's gonna be within the character because that makes the most sense to me. Now, let's say if your character died a lot, you could just bring him back to life. Um, and then the, the controller can pass along that asset, whatever you want it to do. Uh, you can store it in the game instance, plenty of options. Uh, nonetheless, I'm ranting. Uh, okay, so let's go into variables. So let me just close out these so it's easy to see. And then I'm gonna type just data asset. And we're going to search for the primary data asset on what we named. So we named this tutorial character. And from here, we'll be able to select on object reference. Now, another thing you could do is you can also expose this to on spawn so that if you were to manually spawn it, uh, you can set the data asset accordingly. I actually do that in one of my like first videos I did with um, RPG mob. Although the rest of the video is kind of outdated, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I do use it for the mobs and it comes in handy, but nonetheless, um, if you were to spawn like a creature, you could change the model according to data assets like this as well. <clears throat> um, anyways, I am not doing that right now, so I'm just gonna toggle that off. It's not gonna change anything in here, but let's just not have it on for no reason. And from here, uh, I'm not going to create a character selection, so I'm going to manually set it, but as if you did a character selection, you would then set this data asset to the respective data asset. Uh, so for this example, let's use Jekka. And for that, all we need to do is grab the model that is from this data asset. And it's actually super easy to do. Uh, so let me open up the, just one of the assets, Jekka. What we'll notice is that we named this name and we named this mesh. So from the data asset, if you were to pull off mesh, we'll notice that we have a value here and we can get that as well. And if we type in name, we have the exact same thing. Um, also, now remembering we have names, so let me set character name and let's do a string. I'm gonna do a print statement of printing the name just to show you that it is passing along uh, to showcase that you can do multiple types of variables for this. Uh, so what we would do is we just go to character name set, plug that in, and super easy. And then from the mesh, we actually are gonna grab our mesh, set, what is it, skeletal mesh asset, and then plug that in. And compile. And in the viewport, it should change depending on what data asset we have. I'll go into the actual game as well. Uh, so we'll change this to brick change this to Seth, and we notice that it's changing. So if we go into the game, look at that, we're brick. Jekka. I don't know why she's the only one with like a kind of odd name, I don't know. And then we have this guy that has one leg, which I'm forgetting is Seth. Yeah, that's odd name, anyways. And like that, we were able to set all of the models. And then we also got the character name. So let's just do a input. Let's do um, one key. I don't think I have any other one keys, right? Debug. Okay, cool. And then from here, we're just going to do print. Uh, append. Also, if you don't know, the um, append allows you to combine multiple strings and you can all add multiple pins as well. Um, just a random tip, character name, and then include a space, and then I'm gonna just plug that in. So when I press the one key, we're gonna use whatever current value. So theoretically, we should be pulling in Seth. So type one, oh, I forgot I have that key set something else. There we go. 
Uh, let's change this to, I don't know, debug four. That was for my stats tutorial. This is why you don't mix multiple projects into one. Okay. Wow, it's also set to something else. Okay, anyways, you get the picture. It's printing. Um, man, T key. No way I used T key before. Um, such an odd key. T. There we go. Perfect. Anyway, printing. Go back over here. Go to data asset. We'll change this to Jekka. Hit T. And like that, we're printing the name. So that's how you can utilize data assets. I hope this kind of explained like the usages that you could end up doing. Uh, I know I didn't really come up with an example for the custom uh, graph, but you could, I don't know, set anything to where you can save something to the game instance within. Uh, so like, let me actually just do something. I was gonna end the video, but uh, if we went over here, we could do like custom event and do um, save name. And you could like, what, what can I do? Let's do controller. I don't know if you can get player controller actually. You can create a save game object. Um, I don't know, we'll go with that. And then from here, let's say the save game object had a name. What does it have actually? Variables, default. Oh, it just has values. Okay, so for example, set master. What you could do if this data asset had a variable, ignore the actual names for it. This is just for the purpose of demonstrating, uh, as in I'm just doing this last minute, but let's say this had a random float and you can plug that in. From here, if you were going to call that data asset for whatever reason, you could grab this data asset Actually, let me just copy and paste it over here. And what did I call this? Save name. That's so irrelevant. Uh, save variable. And we can do save variable from here. And that would use the current data asset to then call this and it would use its respective variable. And you'd be able to set it inside of a game object. You could set it in a controller, GI, whatever. This is just a general premise and not exactly um, the usage that I would use. This is to show you what you could do. Um, I don't recommend randomly throwing things together like this. That is just an example that I wanted to showcase before ending it. Uh, so hopefully that example helped you out a little bit. I know it was um, a little jumpy, but that's how we can utilize data assets. I love data assets. I think they're very useful. I think they can be implemented very well. Um, if you have ideas, feel free to join the Discord, leave comments. I'd love to take a look, see um, if it's possible. Um, I like playing around with problems. But nonetheless, uh, thanks for listening in. Um, join Discord, leave comment, like, follow, all of that self-promo stuff. It's great having you to listen. Have a good day.